is here to pour out what God has placed upon his heart. I've known him to be a humble man. And what I've seen in him is a heart of a father. Amen? Amen. I've seen a heart of the father in him. I remember the other day when I was in his office, you know, I could, I could really feel I'm talking to a father in here. Amen. May you just lift up your right hand and say, we are blessed tonight. We have a father in the house. Amen. I know some of us, uh, we have seen him on the poster. Some of us, we have heard him being talked about. But tonight, we are privileged that he is in our midst. We have the man of God who is going to speak to our hearts. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So tonight, I just want you to sit there. Um, and when we are about to welcome the man of God, I would want you all. To just stand as we welcome the men of God. Amen. Amen. Apostle Charles Chilisen is the founder and senior pastor of His Presence Ministries International, which currently has 12 churches around the world, including South Africa and the United Kingdom. He is a dynamic speaker who moves powerfully in the Holy Spirit and has been in the ministry for the past 30 years. He is the former acting General Secretary and Harare Chairman of the Evangelical Fellowship of Zimbabwe. A successful businessman who holds a Bachelor of Science Honours in Agriculture and an MDP Management Diploma. Apostle Chiriseri is married to Pastor Petunia. Together they are blessed with four children and three other adopted children. They are founders and directors of Legacy International, a private Christian primary school. Please help me welcome Apostle Charles Chirise. Hallelujah! May we welcome the man of God. Give applause for the man of God. Give a shout out tonight. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, I want to honor the man of God, Bishop Abojo. It's an honor to be here tonight. And Pastor uh, Masunda, we appreciate the invitation to be here tonight. And uh, our my fellow guest speaker tonight, Pastor Rodney, it's an honor to be ministering together with you tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I also want to honor some of the men, uh, pastors that I came with, Pastor Shumba and Elder uh, uh, Muzuri. Sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. I am blessed to be here tonight, and I so identify with a message that Pastor Rodney was ministering tonight. I am one of those people that are an, an advert of what God can do. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to say to you tonight, I hate poverty with a passion. <laughs> if ever there is something that I am running away from as fast as I can it's poverty because where I come from if I will tell you where I am coming from you would not imagine that I am here today and I want to thank God that it is because of his word that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we ask or think or even imagine. So if you were feeling agitated, you are in the right place and you have the right person speaking to you. Amen. You know, when you feel the word that was coming forth causing you to be uncomfortable, that's what happens when a deliverer comes. There must be a spirit that was living. Because 
When somebody who's capable of delivering you from your situation comes, sometimes there's a resistance. You feel like maybe they are putting you down. Maybe you feel angry inside of you. Why is he talking about it? Because when somebody who is anointed to set you free, sometimes when you're in slavery, you want to remain in slavery. So tonight, I am blessed because God blessed me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I know what it is to be blessed. You know, me and my brother, he was talking about Harvest House. We were raised, I remember us in being in a one room. Nine children in one room. I remember us actually having to ask maybe our sister to put together some form of trousers from, from some, from, from some sheep beds. But when you see us today, you cannot imagine where we came from. But what, when God came into our lives, a family of nine, which was everybody calls us poor. But when Christ came into our lives, things began to change. Things began to change dramatically. And today, most of those children, of these children that I'm talking about, they are graduates of the university. Some have been overseas. My father and mother were not educated. God took us from the darkest corners of Mount Darwin. Changed our lives. Today, most of those that I'm talking about, we have more than five pastors in our family. Amen. Not because we were not actually able to do anything. We went to school. We did not go pastoring because we had nothing to do. Because God called us. Because God called us. God chose us. And separated us. And not only that, he blessed us. We began to operate. I mean, I remember, over, I began, I mean, me and my partner were the biggest butchers in this country. Some of you maybe were buying meat from me. Grand butcher meat. Wow. Mm -hmm. right. And 40 outlets in Harare. Wow. Two factories here. But when time came, we decided, I, I've done enough of that. <laughs> so I want to say to somebody today, you know, I know Christians were addicted to sermons. We love sermons so much. I want to say to somebody, I've moved beyond sermons. I want somebody to understand that there is a life to live. And you can live that kind of life. Come on, come on. You can move beyond just talking. We have so many Christians who love talking. But God has not asked us to just talk. He wants men and women that are going to act. Men and women that are going to do something. Let me tell you, when the word of God is pricking your heart, God wants you to be angry. And when you're angry, we are the people that make changes when you're angry in your spirit. You'll never make changes in your family until you're angry about your situation. As long as you are comfortable with what is happening in your life, things will not change. So you need somebody who will come and discomfort you. And make you realize that where you are is not the best. 
That is a place that you can go. You can lift yourself up and begin to go into a place where others are not willing to go, but you are willing to go. So God will send his messengers and they will begin to speak and comfort the uncomfortable. But discomfort, those that are feeling comfortable and are feeling satisfied, I want some holy dissatisfaction to begin to be generated in the men and women of God. When you begin to say, I'm not satisfied. I believe God can do much more. So I want to thank God that God was able to lift us up. Today, we can testify that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you ask or think or even imagine. So I can say to you, if you want to see how God can bless up, look at me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not ashamed to talk about where God picked us from. You know, I took my children the other day and actually showed them the how, and we took photos in that house where we, were, we used to live, where one room, two families were living. I said, my children, this is where we came from. And they couldn't believe us. They couldn't understand. I said, yeah, that's where God took us. And God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, about that which you ask or think or even imagine. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I want to thank God that he has no favorites. Yes. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, God is about to bless me. Yes. I'm about to receive supernatural ability. Yes. Something is about to shift in my spirit. Yes. My eyes are about to be opened. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I feel I need to lay some things tonight. I was really being tempted to flow in what he was saying, but I want to put something. I just feel I need to add something to what many men and women of God are going to be saying here. So that as you endeavor to actually move and become what God wants you to become, you, there is some solid foundation that is laid. I want to talk about this, the supernatural ability. Supernatural ability. Because you know, God can bless you miraculously. God can give you a miracle. He can give you many breakthroughs. But you need to live there. You need to be able to live there. So I, I believe it's critical that you understand some of those ingredients that you and I as believers must be able to put in place so that we can live sustainable lives. We don't want a flash in the pen. We want you and I to be men and women that will sustainably do progressively what God intended you to become. Amen. Let me tell you, God is not struggling to bless us. Yeah. No. We don't have to conjure a lot of things. God is willing. God wants to. God has planned it right from the foundation of it. Actually, the Bible says in Peter, he has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. We have all things within us that he has given us for life, this life, and for godliness, Amen. for spirituality. Amen. So I want to say some things, some pointers here. Looking at some scriptures, right from the beginning in Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. Supernatural abilities. I am going to try and move quickly. But also give you a lot of scriptures. But I believe it's important that we understand that right from the beginning, God intended us to be prosperous, successful, and be like him. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. We all know that scripture. 
Let us make men in our own image. According to our likeliness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. I want to begin tonight that the purpose of man's creation is that he must have dominion. The reason why God created you, your purpose here is to have dominion. That's the reason why God bothered to create man, that you and I may have dominion. And not only that, he also gave him things. He says, I, I want you to multiply. I want you to have ability to multiply. In other words, whatever you touch must improve. That's a supernatural ability that God has given to every one of his children. When he created before the fall, you had ability to touch things and they improve. Things were not meant to die in your hands. Come on. You were not meant to enter a house and it becomes worse than it was before. Life was supposed to begin to multiply. Just like Jesus, whatever touched his hand began to multiply. That is the purpose of man when he was created by God. I'm talking about you. And that's what Jesus came to restore. That's what Jesus came to enforce again. When Adam fell, he lost this ability. But Jesus came to restore that ability. That you and I must have dominion. Rulership. Ability to multiply things. Not to reduce things. In the kingdom of God, the ability to multiply is such a is, is part of that supernatural ability that God has given to every one of us. So you have the ability with Christ in you, you have the ability to multiply Amen. and to have dominion Amen. and to rule, to be fruitful. I want this to be clear at the back of your mind. Jesus' real purpose was to bring you back into your original state. Right. Me and I, we are intended to be like what he intended us to be. Amen. So, it's not something that we should, not, should struggle for. It's what God wants you to be. Right. You are meant to have dominion. Amen. And when I'm talking about dominion, it's dominion over all sorts of things. Rulership over all kinds of things. Ability of all kinds of circumstances. Actually, circumstances are meant to be ruled by you. Amen. That's what God designed you to do. To increase. To flourish. To subdue. To fill the earth. To multiply. That is the purpose. You ask yourself, what is my purpose here in life? You are meant to have dominion. You are never meant to be dominated by circumstances. Amen. You are never meant to be controlled by those circumstances. God's plan for you and I is that he created us to have dominion. Amen. My goodness. How do we dominate? How do we dominate? Because then, let me tell you, as Christians, we need to think Sometimes you are so spiritual that you are not ethnic good. I know we love to be in the spirit. It's very good. I'm someone who moves in the Holy Ghost. I love being in the Holy Ghost. But I also love people to think, to use their brains. Because God created you with a brain. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How do we dominate? When you read in Genesis there, the Bible says... God dominated here on earth by the word that he spoke. He generated dominion by speaking his word. And how did Adam dominate? 
He had ability to speak. Okay. And whatever he spoke, it became. <laughs> no, Pastor Rodney was talking about that the, the words, the prophetic words that he speaks, it never comes back with voice. It never returns to him void. That's the nature of God. Amen. That's the nature of God. Amen. God dominates by his word. So if you are going to have supernatural abilities, you have to be somebody who is a friend of the word of God. Hallelujah. You cannot operate in the supernatural with beyond the abilities of the natural if you are not somebody who is hungry for the word. Amen. Not only hungry for the word, somebody who wants to take it in. And that word must become part, an integral part of your life. Otherwise, you will have those accidents that happen. You are blessed by accident. And you cannot sustain it because you don't know how it came. And you cannot repeat it. You cannot operate in that realm continuously because you don't know what happened. But you need to know what, how God operates. Because he designed you and me to operate like him. Amen. We need to be like our father. Amen. You and I need to operate like our father. And we speak his word. But many of us have spoken the, the language of the enemy. We have spoken the words of our enemy. Our cultures have formatted us and we begin to speak what the enemy is speaking. But God wants you to realize the power to operate in the supernatural is contained in his word. Amen. I want it, it is no secret. Amen. How do we dominate? Adam had those abilities. God's word, I want you to understand. God's word conceived in your heart, then formed by the tongue, and spoken out of your mouth becomes a spiritual force. It becomes an ability. It becomes power. It becomes potent. It becomes life. Jesus says in John, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And they release ability. And they release what kind of ability? The ability of God. And what is the ability of God? Let me tell you, God does not know how to be natural. He doesn't know. God is supernatural. God cannot be explained. God is supernatural. When we are talking about supernatural abilities, we are talking about things that you will not be able to explain to others how it happens. So God is supernatural. And when you speak his word, you release supernatural ability. Many of us don't know even why we read the word of God. Why do you read the Bible? To fulfill a duty that I have read the Bible. Oh, to tell people that I know this scripture. You know, what I'm saying? there are many Christians that just demonstrate that they know the script, they can quote the scripture, and so on. That's not the issue. The issue is that the word of God must be integrated into your spirit. And when it is in your spirit, it is brought out into your mouth. And it is spoken by your tongue. Amen. And when you are spoken, coming from your spirit, a regenerated spirit man, it carries power. Yes. It carries authority. Amen. It carries exousia. When it hits into somebody, something feels like something has happened. It changes the makeup of your spirit man. And things begin to change.
That's why Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> Philippians 4.13. Some of us, we just caught it. Sometimes we don't know why we're quoting it. <laughs> you just say, I can do all things. Can you? Can you? <laughs> no, no, Paul was talking because he knew the ability of God. He knew the ability of God. Do you know the ability of God? Do you know where it is contained? Do you know what? Where it is carried? By his word. Paul's ability was supernatural abilities of God in him. And it was by the word. You know, those that say they can and those that say they cannot, they are both right. They are both right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> because the one who says they can't, they know there is no word of God. <laughs> yeah, but those that say they can, and if they have the word of God, they know what they are talking about. So Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. I can. I can succeed. You know, and when you know what God can do through you, you will ask a different question. You know, people will say, some people will say, what if I fail? But when you are somebody who knows what God can, you begin to ask yourself, what if I succeed? What if I succeed? What if I succeed? You know, I changed my questioning over many years back when I began to realize that I've been asking the wrong question. Because the words that you speak, the Bible says in Proverbs 80, you are snared by the words of your mouth. You have set a limit for yourself without knowing it. Begin to ask yourself, what if I succeed? Begin to think of the things that you are going to do when you succeed. Because many of us, you think of the things that will happen when you fail, when you fail. Yes, when that thing doesn't work, when that deal doesn't come through, when that thing doesn't, what if I fail, what if I fail? I mean, you program yourself and you begin to program failure because, before it begins. I want to say to you, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe. That's why we gather together here and to hear somebody speaking. Words are the most powerful. Very powerful. And I want to tell to you, I want to say to you, the words of your mouth are powerful. You are the sum total of the things that you have been saying to yourself. You're wondering why are you where you are? Listen to what you are saying to yourself. Begin to check your language. In John chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I want to put it to you, brethren. The Word of God is God Himself. So if you want supernatural cut of God in your life, feed on the Word of God. Feed on purpose. Feed on the word of God purposefully, intentionally, deliberately, because you know what you want. Oh my God. Amen. Let me say this. The spirit world is controlled by the word of God. Amen. Hello? Amen. Put this down. The spirit world is controlled by the word of God. I want to say to you, you need to understand that the spirit world is more powerful than the natural world. And you need to realize that the natural world and you here, you were a product of the spiritual world. Hello? You are here because God spoke the word in the spiritual realm. Because God is a spirit. They that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. So God spoke and you became a product. Everything that you see in the natural here, it came because of the spoken word. So I want to put it to you as a believer. You need to understand the spirit world is more powerful than the natural circumstances that you are facing every day. It will do you good to begin to 
move into the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It will do you good to have a desire to actually get into the spiritual realm rather than operate in the natural realm. That's why Paul says, there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, them that seek after the spirit and not after the flesh. My goodness. So I want someone to see something here. Because sometimes we do not have a basis for what we are doing. We have not a confidence. When the devil begins to hammer us, we begin to change our theology. <laughs> because we don't know what we believe. You and I must know what we believe. The spirit world is controlled by the word of God. And the natural world is controlled by men speaking God's words. <laughs> You want to be in charge of your circumstances. You want to determine your destiny. You want to shape your future. Have this clarity of understanding. The natural world is controlled by men speaking God's word. What are you speaking? What are you speaking? Where do you want to go? What's the basis of your speaking? What's the basis of your prayer? What are you praying? What is it best of? The spoken word of God is creative power. Supernatural power. Let me tell you, the spoken word of God, accompanied by the Holy Ghost, is able to recreate things. And bring those things that are not in to become things that are. Yes. I want to say to you, you need to understand that the universe is still obeying his command. Yes. The earth today is still obeying his command. Yes. But God is looking for men and women that will speak the word. Yes. You're wondering why Rodney actually prophesies and begins to speak and begins to say, because he understands that what he's speaking, he's not speaking his mind. He's speaking what God is speaking. But when you speak what God is speaking, it comes to pass. Yes. 